Hi, sorry for the sudden message. I was wondering if I could please have a talk with you sometime soon. Hey, Lisa, of course you can. As a matter of fact, I'm not too busy right now, so you can ask right away. What did you need to talk about? Thank you so much. It's about my marriage. You know how I'm getting married next month, right? Well, me and my fiancé have been thinking, would you mind if my husband and I were to move in with you after the paperwork is done? We'll take care of everything, so all we need is permission from you. Move in with me? I, I mean, I'd be happy to have you two move in with me, but... Wouldn't you two want a bit of privacy? Especially right after your marriage. Are you okay with having your mother-in-law around all the time? And my house doesn't have the best access to any urban cities nearby either. No worries about any of that. Ryan was very worried about you. About how you'd be completely isolated from your social life if he got married and moved out. As the single child of you, he seems pretty concerned about leaving you all alone. So I thought that the best choice to make was for all of us to move in with you. I mean... I really am very happy about how much you do care for me, but that's just too much to ask for a newlywed couple. I'm totally fine with living alone, so please enjoy your marriage together, honey. Please, we talked this through and both insist that this is the best decision for us to make. To be honest, being able to live with you has its upsides for us as well. If we're able to live with you, we'll have less bills to pay, and we're thinking of using that extra money to save up for our wedding. Oh, really? Are you going to start saving up for the wedding starting now? I thought you two were going to have the wedding by the end of the year, since you were getting married next month. Yes, that was our initial goal, but the savings haven't been adding up too well for us. So, we're thinking that the wedding will be pushed back to next year at the earliest. I've been trying to pay back for my scholarships at the same time, but it hasn't been working out too well. I see. I didn't know you had scholarships to pay back. The truth is, my grandparents both fell very ill right before my senior year of high school started. After that, we had lots of bills to pay regarding their hospitalization and nursery. At one point, my parents told me to give up on getting a college education and to start working to help out with the bills. But I was very stubborn about the decision and had them let me go into college. As a trade-off, they made me promise that I would pay for all of my college fees with scholarships. All of it, meaning a full four years? And you're paying it all back by yourself? Yes, but this was all what I signed up for myself, so I have no regrets. Ryan had his college fees paid for by his parents, right? Sometimes I get jealous about those households. <laughs> My husband saved up for his education little by little. It was difficult to keep paying after he passed away, but we came through the four years somehow. Ryan must be very proud of his father as well. If only we had another $3,000, we would be able to carry out the wedding as soon as we wanted. The goal seems so close, but is so far away in reality. So, the both of us would be extremely grateful to have you allow us live with you. We wouldn't have to pay nearly as much rent, and I'm sure we can manage to work hard to save up on groceries and utility fees. I'll make sure to eat nothing but plain pieces of bread and frozen peas. What? Of course, and I'll make sure not to make your son take part in this. I'll be sure to cut down on my spendings alone. It's my fault that the money that could be saving up isn't being saved up, so... But don't worry, I'll make delicious meals for the two of you every meal of the day. Don't mind my cheap meals right beside you. <laughs> How could I not mind that, honey? It wouldn't be natural to see that only one of you were working hard to save up on money while the other was spending away. Please, there's nothing to be concerned about here. I'll make sure not to flush the toilet more than once a day, and I'll only take a shower once a week. But ignore me and carry on with your lives, please. It only makes sense that me, 
the one with the debt, is working hard to save up money to pay it back. Honey, any normal human being wouldn't be able to bear to watch that happen in their own house. Look, if you would like me to, I could help out a bit with your payments. I'll pay for the $3,000 that you're missing right now. Oh, uh, what? Really? I mean, it's not an amount that would affect my life forever. And you two are going to sacrifice your privacy together to live with me. So I'd love to help out such a nice person like you. It seems like the right decision for me to make at this point. Really? Thank you so, so, so much. I'll make sure to send $3,000 to you then, okay? I'll hand it to you when you have your wedding. Uh, wait, uh, if possible, could you please make that $5,000? To tell the truth, we've been thinking that at least $5,000 is necessary for us to carry on with a decent lifestyle after the payments are done. I mean, I'm sure that $5,000 is nothing to you. Uh, what? Uh, oh, was I getting ahead of myself? If it's enough to burden you, then I would hate to do that to you. All I need to do is live the extreme save-up life that I was talking about earlier for a few months. Then I'll finally be free. Free from plain slices of bread and water and showers once a week. I'll make sure to get through this and show you a smile on my face. Someday. Alright, alright. I'll pay the 5000 So... Please, don't force yourself into a dehumanizing lifestyle like that. Who in their right mind would allow someone living with them to treat themselves like that? Oh, yay! Thank you so much! Now I'll be able to have my wedding. I'm so lucky to have such a nice mother-in-law. Oh, I'll go to the tailor to design on my dress right away. I heard from Lisa about the money. You're really giving us 5000 Yes. This is unreal. Thank you so much, Mom. Don't worry about it, honey. It's the least I could do. I mean, I'd be happy to pay even more after making you guys move in with me in a house in the middle of nowhere. On top of that, I couldn't stand myself just to listen about Lisa's hardships and current struggles. I have no choice but to help her out. Hardships? Yeah, about her grandparents falling ill before her going to college. I heard she had to pay for her full four years through scholarships because of that. I mean, college fees are on the rise and the internet rates are ridiculous too. I couldn't just leave her to solve all of those problems by herself. What are you talking about? Elise's grandparents passed away when she was just a toddler. Wait, what? Yeah. Her grandparents from both her mother and father's sides passed away soon after she was born. So, I'm not too sure what you're talking about, because that's definitely not Lisa. But she told me those things just now. And that she had to give up on college education at one point because of those hardships. But she pushed through. Hmm. Maybe you read the messages wrong. Or maybe you're misunderstanding something about the story, because I went over to her house to introduce myself to her parents, and they showed me pictures of Lisa's grandparents while explaining what had happened to them. What? Why don't I talk to Lisa and see if there's some type of misunderstanding going on here? <sighs> no problem. This is probably my misunderstanding, so I'll apologize in advance. Sorry. I just bought a new pair of glasses, and my eyes are probably still adjusting. Maybe that's what caused me to misinterpret something she said. <laughs> uh, that's probably the case. Wow, even my mother ages too, huh? Sadly, yes, honey. So it really does help to have you two live with me. You can move in whenever you'd like after you're officially married. I'll be sure to clean out the house and be ready. Thanks, Mom. All right, I'll contact you again sometime soon. Take care. Sorry to interrupt you during your after party, Lisa. Ryan wouldn't pick up his phone no matter how many times I called, so I had to reach out to you. Hello, Mrs. Stewart. How can I help you? Did you leave something behind at the wedding hall? No, it's not about that, honey. The door to my house wouldn't open. 
I got home just now, but the key doesn't seem to be working. It's an old key, so it may have chipped somewhere and stopped working. Could I stop by your party and borrow the key that I gave you? Oh, about that. Please don't worry about the keys. I changed the lock to the house. So you won't be able to get into the house anymore, Mrs. Stewart. Pardon me? If you'll take a look around, I think you'll see that we've left your stuff outside. So please take those things and leave the perimeter and find another place to stay at. Since we got the wedding done with, the house is ours starting today. We don't need you to be there or invade our privacy, please. Thank you. Wait a minute. Am I missing something here? Why would I move out of my own house? And it's very rude of you to just dump my stuff outside. It's a message. We're trying to communicate that we don't need you anymore, Mrs. Stewart. Thank you for believing in my obvious lies up until now. I didn't think you'd be so gullible, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> no wonder cases of fraud towards old people won't go down. All you have to do is give them a mildly believable story and guilt trip them, and boom, money. What? So, the story about your student debts, and that you weren't able to save up money for the wedding because of it? Those were all lies? Not all of them were lies. That's the key to make it all believable. I was lying about having student debts, but it's true that saving up money was getting hard for us. What? <laughs> yeah, I've always been bad at saving money since I was little, for <laughs> some reason. I knew that I needed $5,000 to have the wedding of my dreams, but I just couldn't stop buying things for myself, you know? <laughs> but Ryan's strict with his money, so he would tell me that he wouldn't pay for half of the wedding fees if those were my reasons. So he'd only pay his half. Could you believe it? That's when I got the idea to have his mother pay for my half if he wouldn't. <laughs> So you lied to me about all of those things. You used your own grandparents as leverage to make me feel bad about not helping. And you made me give you $5,000? I mean, you wouldn't have paid me if I just asked you to pay me, would you? So I had no choice but to lie and make you pay. But I mean, I even told you that I would live with you if you paid for me. So I took my own risks. How? Could you do this to your own husband's mother? Manipulating people and taking advantage of their kindness for your own benefit? If you don't need me anymore, then why don't you two just move out instead of me? You got what you wanted, so pack up your things and leave my house this instant. This is my house, and I have no intention in leaving. Actually... I kind of fell in love with that house the moment I saw it. <laughs> At first, I was intending to leave the house as soon as the wedding was done, but the house is actually very nice and the view from the balcony is beautiful. Therefore, I want the house too, so please leave the house, Mrs. Stewart. Your argument makes no sense. The house is a bit old, but I'm sure that a bit of renovation would make it even more beautiful. To tell you the truth, I've actually called a professional and booked a renovation for the house. So this house is mine now. Please move out. What? You're gonna move into some nursery in a few years anyways, right? <laughs> Just like my grandparents did. <laughs> so what's the point in holding on to the house right now? It's too big for an old lady to live alone in anyways. So the two younglings will make great use of it. <laughs> You're unbelievable. So these are your true colors, huh? I still can't believe it. I thought we were both enjoying living together. I was enjoying your company to say the least. But I guess that was all lies. I thought you were worried for my well-being. But I guess all you had in mind is taking money away from me. The one who gets tricked is always more faulty than the one who tricks them. I've already received every cent that I need from you. 
We don't need you anymore, so please get going. You're the one who's gonna move out, you idiot. What? This is why I don't like young people. They underestimate the elderly. How dare you even think of taking my house and my money away from me like this? Do you really think I'm just gonna let you have it your way? I'm going to spend the night at a hotel today, but I will be back. Be prepared. Don't expect to be able to go into the house once you come back. What? Did you just call me an idiot? That isn't like you, Mrs. Stewart. You think this isn't like me? What does a brat like you know about me? You have no idea what happens when you become my enemy. What? Well then, please have fun at your after party. In other words, have fun while you can, honey. Mrs. Stewart, pick up right now. What is this? Who are these people? I don't know what you're talking about. I just came home with Ryan from the party. We ended up staying out until this morning. Then we came home and everyone from around the neighborhood is surrounding our house. They're all cursing us out about how they don't want us in the neighborhood. We couldn't even go inside because so many people were blocking the door. We ran away and came to a cafe nearby. What do you know about this? Oh my, they were this quick to do their job? I have such amazing neighbors. What is all of this? What's going on? And how do all of them know that I made you move out of your house? Because I told all of them. Isn't it obvious? That you were the girl who lied to me about your upbringings and tricked me into paying money to you. I told them every single detail about this incident. What? Yes, I told them all about our moving in together as soon as the decision was made. And I received tons of advice from all kinds of neighbors. Some who have moved in with someone before, and some who have moved in but ended up splitting because it didn't work out. I wanted some tips and do's and don'ts upon moving in with someone. And I told them about you during the process. How a very nice young lady was moving into my house as the wife of my son, so I needed to be a nice mother-in-law as well. You know, since I heard that a lot of people are scared of their mother-in-laws. You were acting as if you were a nice person because you wanted money from me, but I was acting as a nice person because my neighbors advised me to do so. What? Did you believe in my nice mother-in-law character? Did I seem like a fragile, gullible mother-in-law? Well, all of that was just me acting like that was who I was because I felt bad about going hard on you. If I wasn't acting, I would have called you an idiot for not trying harder to save up. And I most definitely would not have cared if you were struggling alone in my house to save up. What do you mean, character? And of course... All of my neighbors know who I truly am. And they were really supporting me for working so hard to be the nice mother-in-law that I thought would be what you needed the most right now. Everyone was ecstatic when they heard the whole living together thing was going well. And you decided to try and kick me out of my own house after all of my effort. After all of our effort. And you made the cruelest lie and took my money in the process. No wonder all of my neighbors are enraged by you right now. No, it makes no sense. Why would your neighbors get angry at us? You people are just neighbors. Why would your neighbors get so involved in the business of someone else? Whether you like it or not, that's the cost of living in a small rural town. News goes around quick and Everyone takes it personally. Try living there if you can, you wuss. But given how all of the neighbors are so united about getting revenge on you two, I'm not sure whether you could take it. <laughs> Mom, look, I'm so sorry about all of this. I just heard everything from Lisa. I didn't know anything about her life, about the scholarships and everything. I never even thought that my fiancé would do such a thing and take money from my mom. I'm so sorry. 
I don't need an apology right now. I need my house. Either give me a key to the new lock, or change the lock back to the one that I have the key to. Hurry up and make a choice. Look, I made a call and changed the lock back to the old one right away. I'm pretty sure the key that you have right now will open the door. Great. I'll head home then. And I'll dump all of your belongings onto the front lawn as soon as I get there. You don't mind, do you? Of course not. We'll move out somewhere during the day today. But for now, I think I'll have a long talk with Lisa about our future together. So I might take a while to get home and pick up our stuff. Is that fine? What do you mean, your future together? Aren't you getting divorced? Of course I am. She just tried to trick my own mother into giving her money. I never thought she was that kind of person. I'll see you later, Mom. Look what you've done! It's still the day after our wedding and we're already getting divorced! This is all your fault! Ryan wouldn't listen to a single word I had to say. He'd just tell me that his love for me is long gone and that he wants a divorce right now. I mean, what did you expect after what you did to me? You literally lied to trick your husband's mother into paying you money. If anything, I can't believe you didn't think of the risks that come along with doing such a thing. But he told me when he proposed to me that he would love me no matter what and that he would take care of me through anything. He even told me that if anything ever came up between you and I, he would side with me. So I thought he would be on my side, no matter what I did. I don't think you're seeing the point here. This isn't about you and I having a conflict. This is about your morals as a person, and you trying to trick a person into giving you money. You know what? I'm giving you the $5,000 back, so please... Help me convince Ryan to stay together with me. I would rather die than have to get a divorce. I'll do anything. So please, just, just help me this once. You don't need to give me the $5,000 that I gave you. It's against my beliefs to take back something that I once gave to a person. But in exchange, I need you to never show up in front of me again. Can you do that for me? What do you mean? What should I do from now on then? We already had a talk with the company about the renovation of the house that you're living in right now. I just finished the payment for the initial fee to start off the construction last week. What? You already paid for them to start working? Judging from what I heard from Ryan, I don't think he even knows about this whole renovation thing. It was supposed to be a surprise. I was going to tell him after making you leave the house for the two of us. I... I didn't think things would end up like this. What should I do now? I already paid the company $10,000. <sighs> How stupid could a person be? Seriously. I don't even know what to say to you. I mean, your loss, I guess. Please help me, please. I'll be sure to be the best wife and daughter-in-law from now on. I promise. So please... Just help me convince Ryan, and tell the neighbors that the kicking out thing was all just a big misunderstanding. I can't tell my parents that I ended up getting a divorce on the day after my wedding. Don't worry, honey. I'm sure you can. You have the guts to try and manipulate your own husband's mother. I'm sure you'll be able to pull that off. There's nothing to be afraid of if you can do that. Please... I'll get going then. Oh yeah, make sure to come pick up your stuff off my lawn as soon as you can. If you don't come by the end of next week, I'll just throw everything away. What? Goodbye. I'm sure the neighbors wouldn't take your visit kindly, but I'm confident you'll make it out alive, honey. It's all your own fault anyways. You'll be fine. Good luck and goodbye. My son officially divorced Lisa after that. Ryan was very apologetic towards my neighbors, so he went around each house and apologized for everything he had gotten them into. But many of my neighbors scolded him for his lack of ability in choosing a decent woman, telling him to straighten up. On the other hand, Lisa also came back to the neighborhood with her parents. 
going around and apologizing to each and every single person living nearby. Apparently, she's currently on a trip to find herself by traveling around the country. However, even after this whole scandal, we found out that she was going around and using the same trick on her own friends, causing her to lose all connections with everyone she knew up until then. I heard she's been kicked out of her parents' house, living a lonely life in an apartment somewhere. Thank you for watching till the end. If you felt good about this video, like the video. If you didn't like it, let me know why in the comments. Subscribe too. Your likes and subs lead to our motivation. We have so many videos on our channel as well, so go ahead and take a look. See you in the next video.